yeah, I don't know what the fuck is going on, but it's just like suddenly the weather is done with our shit. Yeah, it's kind of like uh, global warming just decided to bring on a new ice age all at once. And apparently by the end of this week, it's going to be over. It's just like, Which you know. Good because the heat in my car has been busted. It's like, I, fine, 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 fine. Fuck you, fine, fine, fine. What the hell, you know? I had no heat in my car for the last few days, including I have like oh, a 45 God. minute drive to work. And I made my 45 minute drive to work in like eight degrees with no heat in my car. So by the time I got to work, my feet were so frozen that it, they were excruciatingly painful and I limped into work. <sighs> then, so that, then my oil was low. So I asked Tom to put some oil in my car for me, which he was nice enough to do. And he, he texts me and he's like, yeah, so while I was putting the oil in your car, something built a nest in your engine. So I cleared that out. And I'm like, what do you mean something? Like what, like a bird? No. Or because I remember the story from Car Talk about a lady who had black widow spiders lay their eggs in her engine. Yes. I'm like, I don't need that shit. But he's like, no, I think it was like a mouse or something. It was like a little nest made out of leaves and paper. And I'm like, I wonder if that's my heating problem. Like if it was blocking something. But the heating wasn't working on my way home tonight. I was like, well, all right, I guess not. I guess I got to have it looked at. And then like a block away from home, I hit a bump. And my heat kicks on full blast. I know exactly what the problem is. There is a valve in your heating system mm -hmm. that actually blocks the cold and lets the hot air in, blocks the hot, lets the cold air in. Oh, because it wasn't even blowing. It's not like it was blowing cold air. Right. But I hit a fucking bump and all of a sudden I have heat and I'm like... The valve got up. That doesn't mean it's fuck? fixed. That just yeah. means you unblocked it. Well, my brother-in-law said that he thought maybe the mouse chewed through a wire or something. So I don't know. But I'm just like, I, oh, okay. Like my defogger has worked the whole time, but I've had no heat. And then all of a sudden I hit a bump and I had heat. And I'm kind of worried that I roasted Fival alive in my car at some point. Somewhere. Oh, God, I'm burning. I'm a little scared that I did that. Um, <laughs> so, oh. yeah, it's been a fun week with my car. It's been an adventure. Well, but driving to work in eight degrees with no heat, I don't recommend it. Really sucked. Well, that's OK. You can we can take time this week to look at the lives of other people who suck far worse. Excellent. Let me get... Yeah, I'm sorry. I don't know why I felt the need to tell everybody about my car troubles. That was probably unnecessary. Are you, you can kidding me? You're, right like, you're like the lord of the of the tangent. Yeah. You, know? you can just edit that right out. Yeah. Okay, let's see. Yeah. Each week, Catherine goes out on the worldwide interwebs, finds all sorts of... And the Radio Dead Air audience... Finds all sorts of horrible stuff, brings it back here for a little segment we like to call What the Fuck is Wrong With You? Now, do you remember last week during our New Year's recap and, and we said one of the worst possible things that could possibly happen would be Senator Shia LaBeouf? Yes. Well, that didn't happen. But something else might. Yes. Because a different person announced they are running for office. Ladies and gentlemen, Arizona may have to deal with Governor Steven Seagal. Oh, oh, I didn't hear about this. I heard Clay Aiken might run for the Senate. Well, that I wouldn't mind so much as Steven Seagal. Cause... Yeah, no, that one wasn't so bad. This is ridiculous. Action star Steven Seagal says he's considered running for governor of Arizona in 2014. Seagal said that he's discussed the possibility with Maricopa County Sheriff and anti-illegal immigration activist Joe Arpaio. And if oh, you just, if you don't know who Joe Arpaio is, I want you to Google penis and f Google images of dicks, and that's about your best estimation of of Joe Arpaio. I think that's kind. Dicks <laughs> are fun sometimes. 
Joe Arpaio and I were talking about me running for governor, which is kind of the go. I suppose I'm mostly considerate, but I probably have a lot more other responsibilities that may be more important to address. Such as? He's promoting a new reality TV show with Arpaio. Like, what does Steven Seagal have to do that's so pressing? I don't know. But, you know, every... Didn't, didn't Val Kilmer... Oh, no, that was New Mexico. Val Kilmer ran for governor in New Mexico a couple years ago. Every time an action hero has been made governor, Jesse uh, Ventura and Arnold Schwarzenegger, they have colossally fucked it up. Jesse Ventura is a little... A little kooky these days. A little. He looks like Riff Raff from Rocky Horror Picture Show, and he shows up every now and then on, like, Piers Morgan to talk about conspiracy theories and yell about how he's a Navy SEAL. And I'm like, honey, you're a Navy SEAL 50 years ago. I don't think you're kicking anybody's ass these days, Riff Raff. But it's, it's, people keep voting for them, but action heroes should not be I mean, governors. Ronald Reagan was a cowboy movie star. Right. Look how that turned out. Yeah, that was not trickle down economics. Yay. Let's just leave the movie stars to the movies. Yeah. Well, more Unless fun. Unless Chris Evans wants to be president, because I'll vote for him. <laughs> We've got more fun in government um, this week. Have you ever seen one of those PowerPoint presentations where they get up and they use a laser pointer? Yes. To, to show. Um, I've had to build some of those. Normally, normally, said laser pointer isn't attached to a fucking handgun. Was Jerome Hauer. point presentation on sniping? Jerome Hauer, Governor Andrew Cuomo's Director of Homeland Security, took out his handgun and used the laser sighting device attached to the barrel as a pointer in a presentation to a foreign delegation. It happened on October 24th in Albany at the highly secure State Emergency Operations Center. These officials... This is a government official? Yes. These officials, one of whom claimed to be an eyewitness, said that three Swedish emergency managers in the delegation were rattled... When the gun's laser tracked across one of their heads before Hauer found the map of New York at which he wanted to point. Hauer, commissioner of the Division of Homeland Security and Emergency Services, was disabled by a stroke a few years ago and can be unsteady. He isn't a law enforcement official. He carries the loaded 9mm Glock in a holster in the state buildings on apparent violation of state law barring state employees from bringing weapons to the workplace, several witnesses said. So to begin with, the guy Why in charge of Homeland... Okay? What? Why is this okay? The guy in charge of Homeland Security for the state of New York is already a security risk. I wonder if he can do sign language. And yeah, people are going, wait, that shit was loaded? Yes! I think I know what happened here. So, Mike Bloomberg just ended his, like, I don't know, 14-term run as mayor of New York City. You mean his reign as emperor? Yeah. Yeah. And, you know, a lot of people really were not fond of the fact that Bloomberg bought himself a third term and banned everything and, yeah you know was kind of a plutocrat i mostly like mike bloomberg but he did some shit that was kind of wonky mike bloomberg is a big big gun control guy he took a lot of guns off the street in new york city that's one of the things he did well but like the, the, there was much made of the fact that de blasio's inauguration was kind of a giant middle finger to the entire bloomberg administration mm -hmm. so um I feel like what happened here is just another don't let the door hit you ass on the way out, Mikey. Not well, this was Cuomo. Gun, this is I'm from the governor's have an office. I'm going gun, and I'm going to use it in my PowerPoint presentation. Well, this is from the governor's office, though. This is Cuomo. Yeah, but Cuomo is like a Staten Island Guido. Have you ever heard Andrew Cuomo speak? 
because it sounds like an episode of The Sopranos. <laughs> I'm not even kidding. He has like the heavy fucking Staten Island. Like, oh. he's the governor, and on the side, he runs a little waste management business, if you know what I'm saying. D.A. Scott says, public speaking, it's worth a shot. <laughs> of this all- just sounds like a whole host of problems. Like, this guy has mental issues from a stroke. And he's carrying around a fucking loaded... He's the state point- employees aren't supposed to carry weapons, so let's give the guy with mental issues from a stroke a loaded weapon that he's not even supposed to have at all. And then he can point it at people from another country. Like, at least when the governor was blind, I could see this getting by. Because the dude might just not know. <laughs> Andrew Cuomo has pretty good eyesight, as I understand it. He's apparently allowed to bring a yeah, uh, a real life Chief Wiggum, folks. Yeah, it, it is a very Chief Wiggum kind of thing, isn't it? Well, okay, there, there's that. What are you junk looking down for? Get off the floor! I want to show you this thing. You, you right there. Get up. Get up and look at this thing over here. Why are you cowering? What does what? Take me seriously. Oh yeah, someone uh, Galileo pointed out. Um. Andrew Cuomo is also dating Sandra Lee of Food Network, almost homemade uh, fame. Ah. Uh, uh. But he's the son, I want to say, of Mario Cuomo, who was a former mayor in New York City. So it's all it all comes back to New York City. PowerPoint and shoot. Oh, oh, oh. That's... Somebody needs to take this man's gun away while he's at work. So, uh, we have Valentine's Day coming up fairly soon. Yeah, all the candies are ready in the stores, like, day after Christmas. Have you ever, have you ever done, um... It's the War on President's Day. The War on President. Um, have you ever done anything really elaborate and romantic for someone you were with? Yes. Hmm. Now, did, did you, 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 you plan those things, though. You, you plan, you, you, and... It's probably during the process, I have done this too, probably during the process, you stop to think to yourself how this could go wrong. Well, I mean, yeah, it takes a lot of time to get a custom rubber suit in the mail and you think about powder and yeah. Well, I bet you probably don't have to think about olive oil normally. This guy did. That helps with the rubber suit, actually. Australian man stuck in washing machine. The naked man climbed into the elaborate hiding place in order to surprise his wife upon her return home, but soon regretted it. The man from Moropna, uh, north of Melbourne, I just uh, became stuck in the top loading machine as he tried to use it as an elaborate hiding place. It took 20 minutes to free the man with rescuers using olive oil to ease him out. Why? You know, what was going, okay, what was the end game here? She was gonna come downstairs, open the washing machine, you were gonna pop out with your dick waving and go surprise. Like the world's most horrifying Jack in the Box. (laughs) <laughs> but um this this I, I don't think this was <sighs> why the washing machine yeah like i get the oh i'm gonna be funny and hide and jump out of somewhere i've done that to poor tom a million times and <laughs> i don't know how he hasn't had a coronary by now but uh the washing machine? The washing like, machine. You hide behind a door and then jump out. Because here's the thing. What if somebody just turned it on without looking inside? That shit laundry can happen. Sex. Okay, who, who's saying laundry sex? Laundry totally. sex. Totally. Apparently that's a thing. I've seen Varsity Blues. So apparently that's a thing. That, you know, let the dryer do the work. Fine. But... 
Laundry sex, as I understand it, is sex on top of a washing machine that's running. Not inside one that's not. No part of that involves getting inside the washing machine. And the insides of those are not big. How did he even get in there? Maybe he was just a thin guy, but still, you know. Like, is he the little Asian guy from Ocean's Eleven? <laughs> you know, even There's still. There's space in there. You know, I, we've I've said this before. Humans need whiskers, like cats. Yeah. Because yeah. that's why cats have whiskers. They know <laughs> if they put their head through something, if they can pull it back out again. Oh my god! Have you ever seen a cat with like damaged whiskers? Like if they got burned or broken or something, like that cat is all fucking discombobulated. They cannot make sense of the world. Mm -hmm. without their whiskers like you don't realize how much they depend on those things until like one side gets messed up and they're like <laughs> okay feels you says no honey it just shrunk in the wash <laughs> it's dry clean only <laughs> and honestly you know i can understand being romantic and such but maybe the comedy of being in an enclosed space and naked was probably one or the other, dude. One or the other. I just feel like your washing machine is kind of like Walmart. There's nothing sexy there. And fine, talk to me about laundry sex all you want. Nobody that I know of thinks about the inside of a washing machine and gets turned on. That you know of. That I know of. I'm sure it's a thing, and I'm sure I'm going to get links to yeah. a series of horrifying fetish sites any minute now. Which I will click and inflict upon you all next week. But generally, that's not... And also, you're kind of depending... I Like, if you didn't shower before you got in that machine... You're kind of fucking up that machine's ability to do its job because now you have to run it empty before you can wash any clothes in it. Because you've been rubbing your sweaty scrot all over well, it. Well, now it's also full of olive oil. Yeah, and scrot rot. <laughs> so we're having a night full of wonderful travel problems, not just for uh, for Emily, but also everybody was at MAGFest. Uh, you I'll are... save you, Emily, with my horrible accent. Juario is stuck in D.C. I think Linkara just got home. Wow. Uh, there are other people who just, that your fucking flights were just like, stop that. They're happening. like closing schools for cold tomorrow. I can, I can understand. Like Jake Gyllengal is going to have to outrun the cold any minute now. <laughs> I understand canceling and diverting flights for legitimate reasons. But once again, I don't believe if someone told me my flight was canceled for this reason, I'm a punch somebody. Flight makes emergency landing in Kansas City after flash drive found in bathroom. Why? An American Marilo American Airlines flight has made an emergency landing at Kansas City International Airport. After a flash drive was found in a bathroom. Spokes, airport spokesman Joe McBride says the discovery was made Sunday afternoon on Flight 24. It was headed from San Francisco to JFK. McBride says the Boeing 767 was taken to an air away from the terminal and was being searched. The 227 passengers and crew members were evacuated. McBride says it's a, quote, a new day and age since 9-11, and that officials take precautions if something is deemed suspicious. Can you... Blow things up with a flash drive? That's not a Typically, no! So, ladies and gentlemen. I think you can assume that probably one third of the people on any given plane probably have one of these little external hard drives on them. If you want to have, if you want to cause a plane to make an unscheduled stop, leave your flash drive in the bathroom, they will lose their shit. Let's be honest, if you want to cause a plane to make an unscheduled stop, do anything at all. Do anything. Anything at all. Start whistling. Yeah. Make fart noises with your hands. 
carry a plastic butter knife from the bagel shop. Order extra sugar in your coffee. Yeah. There was actually a plane that landed on a highway in the Bronx this weekend. A little, like, single-engine plane uh -huh. was actually coming. There's a tiny, tiny airport in my town. I'm in Danbury. That only handles little, like, personal passenger planes. And they were headed for that airport. And I forget what happened. But they ended up having to land on, like, the Major Deegan Expressway. Can you imagine, like, you're on the fucking highway and the airplane comes in and it's it's the Bronx so there's pretty much a ton of cars on that highway all the time airplane well I know the, the problem is okay when I first got my first smartphone it was uh, one of the Windows phones back in the uh, like 2005 ish yeah. and I was in an airport with it and I took a picture with it and someone saw me take a picture with a smartphone now this is when they were relatively new and they immediately went and told security. And security well, came... Well, them long-haired hippie-looking freaks, too. Security came up to me, and they, they're like, What is this thing? I'm like, it's a phone. What is this sorcery? But it's got a screen on it. What, what... And they were just... They were like, What are you doing with... And they actually had to go and ask, What is this? A, this is a phone? This is a... It was the saddest thing! You should have, like, held it up and been like... <laughs> <laughs> Scotty, beat me the fuck up. There's no intelligent life down here. That would be the, great. That's the problem. You expose normal people, or just not even normal people, you expose people to technology. And they are just terrified of this shit. Every single fucking time. I've had that problem with my e-cigarette before people started actually using them. I've had that problem. It just technology baffles and confuses them. I remember this as far back as Windows 3.1. I mean, I got legit stopped because I had the joke lighter. I think I've told this story before. Yeah, that looked like a, yeah. That I had a lighter that wasn't a real lighter. And they're like, well, you can't bring this on the plane. And I'm like, oh, and I forgot it was in my purse. And... Then the guy tried to light it, and it was actually a trick lighter that electrocuted you when you tried to light it. And I was just like, oh my god, I'm going to get oh forever. Because, <laughs> like, I'd already gotten chosen for the extra screening because my the name on my driver's license didn't match my social security card because I hadn't changed my name legally yet. This was after I first got married. So then, like, the guy's going through my bag, and he finds this lighter, and he's like, well, you can't have this. And I'm like, I know, I'm very sorry, I don't. Like, I didn't even know it was in there. And then he shocks himself. And I'm like, well, I had a good run with the freedom. Luckily, he had a good sense of humor. And he was like, oh, that's hilarious. The guys are going to love this. I have to keep this. And I'm like, you, you keep it. Can I go? Am I free to go? You're not going to put a bag on my head? You keep it. I'll buy you five. What's your address? Like, So... We, this is one about technology, and I can kind of understand. But our next story is, it's one of those things you have to, to just be sitting there and going, no, 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 bullshit, but no. And this may be an older story, but still, no. Student expelled for casting a spell. Oklahoma High School suspended a 15-year-old student after accusing her of casting a magic spell that caused her teacher to become sick. ACLU said it filed a lawsuit on behalf of the student Brandy Blackbear, charging that the assistant principal of Union Intermediate High School in Broken Arrow, Oklahoma, suspended her for 15 days last December, for supposedly casting a spell. It also charged the Tulsi area Union Public Schools with repeatedly violating Black Bear's civil rights by seizing notebooks she used to write horror stories and barring her from drawing or wearing signs of the pagan religion Wicca. And, and <laughs> the lawsuit stated that because of the unknown cause of the teacher's illness, 
Um, they advised 15 year old school that she was an immediate threat to the school and summarily suspended for what he arbitrarily determined to be a disruption of the education process. This is in America, guys. Well, that's a load of bullshit. I mean, maybe that's possible. I don't know. I'm not a Wiccan. Maybe you can do that shit. Maybe she did. Until you can prove it. Like, until you have video of her waving a wand and going, Avada Kedavra, or whatever the spell is. And Wiccans, I know that's not how it works. I'm <laughs> clearly being facetious here. Until you have a smoking eye of newt, probably not the way to go. I mean, it's the equivalent of, like, expelling a Catholic kid for praying that you get sick and you just happen to get sick. Sus she was suspended for... for and what's funny, later in the article, it says she told them she might be a Wiccan. She's Roman Catholic. So... But I don't think that's how Wicca works. If they really thought she was a witch... And she made a guy sick. If they really believed this, wouldn't they have thought, you know, maybe if we suspend her, that might call, they might be like a rain of toads or some shit. You might not want to do that. Yeah, haven't these people seen the craft? Do not piss off teenage witches, man. <laughs> They'll call the corners on your ass, man. Yeah, she'll go all Feruza Balk on your shit and you will not like it. Yeah. I love that movie. How could this, how does, it's America. This is the 21st yeah. fucking century. This is some shit. I know there's those, those polls that say people believe angels are real and they believe these things, but really? You think another human being can by willing it so, or saying a certain collection of weird syllables by moving air through the fleshy bits of their throat change the fundamental nature of the universe well yeah haven't you read the secret <laughs> the secret is they stole your money um uh... no yeah th 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 this is some shit first of all it's kind of religious persecution guys you just kicked a girl out of a public school for what may or may not even be her real religious beliefs but even if they are you can't kick a girl out of school for that. You can't. <laughs> it's America. Computer Ronin. The school board used magic. They made their credibility disappear. <laughs> Second, you have absolutely no proof. So, like, where do you think this is going to go? You have violated this person's civil rights, and you have done so for... No discernible, provable reason. Good job, you're an idiot. America! Um, next one is from Atlanta, and it's a little bit of justice done, but the reason for the justice, I think we, I, I believe we covered this story, but I don't remember. But still, yeah. <sighs> Motherfucker. All right. I've been on a plane with children. And I've long maintained they have a union because when one gets tired of screaming and stops, another one takes over for it. Well, they, they work in shifts. Very, very small babies are capable of empathy and jealousy. And so they, they like, you know, they say babies start crying and then another baby starts crying. They said that's actually because of empathy. Well, this guy's reaction is probably because of dickery. Man gets eight months in prison for slapping <gasps> toddler on a plane. And first off, hooray. Eight months, yes, good. A former aerospace executive who slapped a crying toddler on an airplane and used a racial slur against the child, who is black, received an eight-month prison sentence on Monday for an incident his attorney blamed on his alcoholism. 
Joe Rickley Hunley, who apologized in court to the child's mother, was accused of striking the 19-month-old boy in the face on board a Delta Airlines flight from Minneapolis to Atlanta last February. Hunley pled guilty to a misdemeanor charge in October. Prosecutors sought a six-month prison sentence, but the federal judge opted for stiffer punishment. Good job, judge, because fuck this guy. You don't just go around hitting kids. You don't hit your own kids. You don't hit a stranger's kids. No. If it didn't come from your genitals in some way, shape, or form, don't put Even your hands on don't it. Don't hit it. You don't hit two-year-olds. Well, no. You don't do it. No. But still, you are legally keep away. That you is a no-go zone. What? Because you know why babies cry on planes? Because the pressure change is very painful to their ears, and they're too young to understand it. So they just know that they're in pain, and they don't know why. Well, that's no. why babies cry on planes. It's more than that, okay? It's more than the their, their ears are in pressure. They're in a room with all these people they don't know, and the room is moving. And they can't walk around or do anything. And to make it it's even more... And to make it even more unsettling, everybody acts like it's normal. Yeah. So the kid probably thinks they're going insane. Yeah. And they have to sit in a very small, confined space and not make noise and not do anything. And they're in pain. This is hell for a child. I, I'm, I'm, I'm with the judge for going, no, no. No, that's not strong enough. Fuck you. And it's not just slapping the kid. It's calling the kid a racial slur in the process. Yeah. I don't you, think a 19-month-year-old even understands that shit. You are a goddamn asshole in every possible way. And, like, this is the stuff that makes me crazy. Like, air travel is miserable anymore. Like, we have so many stupid security measures that don't make us any safer. And are basically just designed to annoy us. It's miserable with any kind of weather. Flights are delayed. Mm. It's expensive. They charge you for three peanuts. Like, it's a miserable experience for everybody. For everybody. Not just for you. Like, you're not the only one having a shitty day if you're getting on the plane. Everybody's having a shitty day. There's no need for you to make it worse. We have one more that's going to make you mad. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I didn't do it. But, um... <laughs> oh, boy. You know, sometimes I can understand having to leave your child unattended even momentarily for an emergency. If something is on fire. If there's something, you know, emergency. If there is a tornado. There's a TV on sale at the Walmart on Black Friday. Yeah, and especially, I don't believe that a burrito qualifies as an emergency. Grandfather abandons two-year-old boy for burrito. Grandfather was arrested in San Diego's Chula Vista area overnight when he allegedly abandoned his two-year-old grandson on a sidewalk for several hours while he went to a taco shop to eat a burrito. According to the Chula Vista Police Department, a skateboarder spotted the man to abandoned toddler fast asleep inside a jogging stroller around 11.30 p.m. When officers arrived on the scene, they were unable to immediately locate the child's parents and the boy was taken to press protective custody. Chula Vista Police Department issued an alert for the found toddler. Around 2.45 a.m., the police said the boy's 17-year-old mother called authorities looking for her child. Police said the grandfather, identified as 53-year-old Frank Moreno, told his family he didn't know where the boy was and allegedly appeared to be the, under the influence of a controlled substance. Took off, officers took Moreno into custody, who charged him child cruelty with a possibility resulting in injury or death and being under the influence of drugs. Maybe it's time to stop letting Grandpa Cheech babysit. Yeah, yeah. Bad Grandpa is a comedy movie. It's fiction. Two hours at 1130 at night. They're lucky. They're so lucky that a decent human being found this child and like contacted the authorities that this child didn't wake up and get rolled out in the traffic, that this child wasn't 
kidnapped, accidentally run over, hurt, beaten. I love, I do love. For two hours, like. I do love this. The Good Samaritan was a skateboarder. That that just that's kind of a makes me a little yeah. bit happy, you know. Good but. job, skateboarder. Fuck yeah. Um. And probably they would have let the stroller into the taco shop. Yes. Why? I mean, what the? A bird. Why did you not bring the baby with you to? Get, was it like a special adults only burrito? It's the bourbon burrito. Was it like a burrito with naked boobs or something? I mean, I don't think I ever want to see a porn burrito. Porn burrito. Although now I'm now I'm flashing back to the whole hot pocket thing with Doug. Yeah. <laughs> no, I just, I just. How? No, no, no. Like, you know, every now and then I'm like, I know what happened here. No. At 1 a.m., the family went looking for the child and found the grandfather sitting at a local taco shop eating a burrito. Like you do. Just like, you know, ain't no thing. Grandpa, where's Billy? You want a burrito? They're like two for a dollar. Yeah, it's time They're to stop good. letting Grandpa babysit. Yeah, stop letting, letting, God damn. And, and I mean, the scary part, like, you know, they say under the influence, like, my initial, you know, I would, I had two initial assumptions. One, he's a dick. Hmm. Two, perhaps he's suffering from some manner of dementia. But no. Because my dad had Alzheimer's and right. he would wander off on my mom and scare the crap out of everybody. That does happen. You know, right. he could have honestly forgotten the kid. But no, he was just lit the fuck up. He's just an asshole. <laughs> Be goddamn. That said, if grandpa has dementia, it's still time to let him not babysit anymore. I, th I think that the first thing we've learned is that no burrito is that good. No. A burrito is not an emergency. No TV is that cheap. No burrito is that good. No. A burrito is not an Unless it's coming out the other end, a burrito is not an emergency. Small child pretty much trumps almost anything on the priority scale. Like, you're in charge of a small child. Almost anything else is going to be less important. We've learned that... Even if the building's on fire, you want to take that child with you out of the building. We've learned that laser pointers are good. Laser pointers attached to a gun. Bad. Just, just a little history lesson. A random foreign national getting shot. That was World War I. Just saying. It's kind of like the uh, Bruce Willis negotiation tactic from the Fifth Element. This is, that was not a diplomacy handbook. No, no. We've learned that, yes, being romantic and doing elaborate things for your significant other, these are good things to do. You should yeah, I don't think jumping naked into the washer counts as a romantic gesture. I'm sorry. <laughs> no. Yeah, I don't know if, I don't see how that would really be all that, you know, that's that's not yeah. gonna make the knees wobbly. That that's just <laughs> gonna it's... like showing up with roses is a romantic gesture. Uh, we're, you know, a long distance Casey Kasem dedication is a romantic gesture. That just jumping that... naked in the washing machine? No, that's just Bob. What the fuck are you doing in there? I got shit to do today. Get the fuck out of there. Tom leaving his dirty sock on my Christmas tree was kind of his version of a romantic gesture. Tom Don't be naked into the washing machine? Not so much. We've learned that people are fear technology like they fear sorcery. And people still fear sorcery. Yes. 
Yeah, that's kind of a twofer, isn't it? We're oh my some God. dumb. If she mo- had like, if she had like a new model of phone, it would have just all been over. Huh? I wonder if there's a spell app. There probably is. Like a hexes app. I need that. If not, give it two minutes. Someone will write one. Just point your phone at somebody and hit the button and bam. Apoplexy. We've learned that you must control yourself. Control the rage within. And most especially, if it didn't come out of your junk... It doesn't matter. It's a no-go zone. It came out of. You don't hit kids. Well, you don't hit kids, but still, it's a no-go zone. You have no authority here. It's like the wicked witch of the. It's like the good witch of the north. You have be gone. You have no power here. That's why my nieces and nephews love them. Love me because I'm so not an authority figure. Like I'm the grown up in the room who's like, "I, I don't know. Ask your mom. I'm not making that call. I didn't make you. (sighs) <sighs> yeah, have another piece of chocolate. I'm not your mom. I just don't know what the fuck. This was a terrible week. This was a terrible week. Like, there wasn't even any real funny this week. It was just all horrible fucking people. And I th- including Steven Seagal might end up the governor of New Mexico, of, of Arizona. Can you imagine Arizona with Steven Sakal and Joe Arpaio? Like, and John McCain, for fuck's sake. Holy crap. It's going to be like impotent old man with Dick Envy Central. It's just going to be a whole state run by impotent old men in a prolonged midlife crisis who hate the foreigners. And have access to tanks. (laughs) 